Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do Captain Power and the Soldiers of Fortune, issue number one by Continuity Comics. Yes, um, so this is new to me. Well, new as in um, I never saw the Captain Power television series ever. I've seen some clips and some photos, you know, online, but never since we don't have this in the Netherlands. So um, I came across this one and I've, I've thought to myself, you know, I'm going to buy it. So I have two issues. There's only one downside with a lot of continuity comics. Um, the problem is, is that a lot of the series don't continue. So I have two of them. And after the second one, there is a storyline, you know, to be continued. But there has never be a Captain Power issue number three, which sucks. Um, that's one of the reasons that I'm hesitating doing continuity comics reviews because suddenly or it just stops or it goes nowhere or it just, you know, I don't know, lies on the shelf for a very long time. Um, so why am I doing this? Uh, why I'm doing a review of a comic that goes nowhere? Well, maybe it's because um, maybe a lot of you or some of you have seen this Captain Power television show and, you know, or have fond memories of it, you know, have some nostalgia feelings for it. Uh, maybe I wanted to show you that this comics is, is existing, you know, maybe uh, collectors, you know, wants to have this comic in their possession uh, or want to know what this is all about. So, yeah, uh, although I'm probably not going to do um, Captain Power issue number two review, uh, but this is a, a very cool introduction, what Captain Power is in comic form, of course. Uh, now, note that I have no clue who these guy, uh, characters are uh, and what they can do, but uh, we're going to find out. So we start here, somewhere in the future, and we have here Captain Jonathan Power, and he leads a desperate search. He's, uh, he's looking for Professor Karl Melenkov, and there is uh, also, I don't know, enemy robots patrolling the streets, and we have uh, Karl Melenkov, of the, the professor, he is the holder of the key to the salvation of mankind or its destruction. Um, so he's, I don't know, running away. But there's also a shadow here. And um, they noticed on the radar is something uh, off. There's two people here. So uh, Jonathan uh, jumps forwards. He knows it's a trap, but then he, you know, pushes the emblem on his uh, chest and he turns into... The great Captain Power. Now, I love this, this page. Well, basically, one of the reasons that I bought this comic because of uh, I'm a fan of Neil Adams. He uh, penciled this and also wrote this with Peter Stone. And, um, you know, a lot of continuity comics, basically all of them, except for a few, is drawn and written by, uh, by him. And uh, I, I just love his, his, his art style. It's really cool. Um, so, yeah, he jumps into action, but he knows he's, uh, you know, uh, outnumbered. But then here in the air, there's a machine called Sauron, the Biodread Warlord. <laughs> I love that. A living machine that ex exists solely to serve Lord Dread uh, in destroying all of humanity to make way for the machine. So he uh, reports back to Lord Dread. And Lord Dredd says, um, hey, uh, I see Captain Power here. Um, shall I destroy him? And, and Lord Dredd says, do not engage Power yet. Wait on joy until he's joined by the team. I want all of them. Okay. So, yeah. And um, the enemy camp here uh, is, is calling for reinforcements. Um, and he's over unit Drucker. Uh, we are encountering heavy resistance. Source unknown. Request support groups. But then uh, on the um, the soldiers of fort soldiers of the future, I want to say soldiers of fortune um, are here as well. So we have tank. He has a problem uh, with uh, with uh, with dread. He hates them for reasons. Uh, we have also um, a hawk here, um, you know, coming to their aid. And then uh, uh, Sauron saw, sees uh, a hawk on the air, in the air. So he reports to Dredd, uh, It is Hawk, Lord Dredd, vaunted master of the air. Give me leave to shred him to uh, his wings. I'm sure Power's whole team is nearby. You'll have it, 
my bio dreads destroy them and then scream <laughs> looks cool so yeah more reinforcements coming so we have i don't know scout and pilot uh like i said i do not know these characters but they are part of the team and um so tank comes here um well this guy is still screaming for reinforcements it's only fair to tell you that my associate scout has been cutting the broadcast off the air for several minutes and, and then he's get punched in the face. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we have, uh, why am I forgetting his name? Hawk um, is being shut down from the air by Sauron who looks, I don't know, it looks like a, I don't know, a transformer. Uh, it reminds me of, uh, I forgot the, the name of that transformer, you know, that also looks like a Hawk-esque robot. I forgot. Uh, anyway, so uh, Hawk uh, asked permission to the captain to uh, to engage Sauron. So they're having a battle in the air. This looks all freaking awesome. And uh, so he uh, evades the, uh, the, the the shots, the, the energy beam, and he just punches him through the wall. And then the robot says, yeah, you'll pay for that human with your pitiful life. And then uh, power screams, tank advanced trooper at the uh, six o'clock. Take them out before they go and get to effective range. Yeah, so he shouts more orders to Pilot and other people. And yeah, even Hawk is, is defeating, so as it seems here, um, Sauron. He has him on the ropes. Uh, but then out of nowhere, um, some mortars are coming, spreading all over the battlefields. And even the enemy and the, the good guys are scattering. Uh, who else for, is throwing these mortars? We don't know. And uh, so they regroup. And they uh, confirmed that they lost the, uh, the professor, Melenkov. And uh, so, yeah, they don't know who, uh, where he is uh, or who has taken him. Because I believe that's what's happening. So they are going back to base. And uh, again, the art looks great. The, the uh, colors look not very good, in my opinion. And um, so there is uh, some kind of a third party involved, you know, going on with the martyrs. And um, so Captain Power says to his team that he is going, you know, uh, away for a while. He goes to his father and then this woman says, his father. Yeah, it's a long story, kid. The captain goes back to see his old dad every time about this year. Back to the grave. So, and then we um, we see, well, we can basically go back to the enemy's camp. And this looks really like a cartoon, you know, with good guys and evil guys. You know, with cool costumes, you know. That is great for, you know, selling toys which was cool and uh so this girl says captain power was his father yes Stuart gordon power the monster maker and then we go to volcania stronghold and headquarters of the lord dread and his minions and he screams to this guy says you incompetent fool your bungling has cost me not only the most cherished gold the death of power but you lost malenkov you pay with your life and then there's a voice, no dread. And he says, what? Who dares question my orders? Overmind. Digitize him. Save his memory. Your emotions cloud your reason. Um, the needs of the machine comes before your lesser needs. And um, so the Overmind says, the power will be at the grave. Yes, at the father grave. Sauron, organize the strike team. I'll deal with this personally. By the will of the machine, master... You know, it, <laughs> it, it sounds like a Cylon from Battlestar Galactica. I love this. Also, this color scheme, you know, look very dread and ominous. I wish uh, comics do more of that, you know? Just cool. Is this what they call bisexual lighting? <laughs> that, this, was a, this was something. Uh, ads. Yeah, more ads. Skipping. So we have a flashback scene about, you know, the war between machines and humans. So it seems that... The, the machine war, or the metal wars, was uh, at the beginning with, you know, two countries um, having a dis dispute over a border. And they all both activate an, an, an some kind of a, how do you say, robot army. So instead of using humans, they thought, hey, this is, you know, going to preserve uh, humanity's lives. So they are all using machines and robots to fight each other in, uh, at day two. And, uh, but they made a, a, a critical error. The war uh, was going into populated areas and there was around 37,000 were 
people were killed before a ceasefire was called by the operators. The ceasefire could not be affected at this time. We were told enemy factories continue to produce more and more robot troop to replace destroyed robots. And yeah, we obviously see these people are, you know, uh, being bombarded and, you know, being killed by all these robots. So it seems that the computer uh, AI, I guess, or the people who are operate the machines, um, thought that the buildings were hiding places for the enemy, worthy only to be cut down. That they might contain hundreds of people was of no consequences to the metal warlords. Uh, that was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, in the end, humanity... Um, well, it survived, but it's around 40% of the country's popularity and cities um, were destroyed and killed. And uh, there was a lot of refugees. Uh, they become homeless and they uh, try to, you know, live. But uh, it's really hard when the robots are still around. So there was two men retain a vision, a peace through technology. Stuart Power. So yeah, Stuart Power was with his companion, Lyman Taggart, worked day and night to create a machine to end the metal wars by controlling all the robots. But they, um, they were the best of friends. Well, not really. So they're having an argument about, you know, testing, etc. So um, Power says, no, Lyman, the blasted thing needs more tests. Well, thousands more die, Stuart. We can test Overmind on a human. It's too dangerous. I don't doubt... I don't doubt that Overmind can override all the com robot uh, programming in the world, but we don't know what effect it will have on human masters. We wait for more testing. And, and Lyman says, your caution kills thousands of people, Stuart. You are wrong. So I think Lyman has a noble thought, you know, but uh, look at this cool chair, right? So sci-fi. And uh, so he thinks any risk is worth it if we can save lives. I would be willing to die finding out if it works if I could end the war forever. Stuart just doesn't understand. If I die, he can carry on with our work. If I succeed, many thousands of lives will be saved. It's worth the risk. So he powers up the machine and then he says, oh, there's a beauty. And then there's pain in, uh, in his head, more pain. And he says, the machine, the machines cut me. Uh, and then... <laughs> this is happening. This is so cool. What a transformation. The machines cut me to my soul and it fills me with the precision of the machine. Uh, so, yeah, Lyman, uh, power comes in, but it's too late. Lyman Taggart uh, cut Stuart's power off some uh, of the control and he has regained all of the control of the robots. And uh, Lyman says, um, and so all the machines will come to me and the metal wall shall end. But the metal wall shall end only when men surrender their wills to the perfection of the machine. You shall be the teachers of better ways, the way of the machine. Yeah, so basically he becomes the evil guy. This is a very cool villain origin. I love it. And um, so there is going to be a resistance. Uh, while Stuart Power can do nothing, so he tries to you know, um, talk to people and, uh, you know, use their wits and minds to, you know, overcome the new threat. And so he assembles some kind of a resistance that fights against the machines, which is a little bit like the Terminator, right? Which is pretty cool. And um, so, and then the these, how do you say, resistors, how they, that's how they, what they call themselves, they have victories over... Uh, the machines, but then, you know, uh, Lyman, who is now called Lord Dread or something, <laughs> says, Stuart Power and his retrograde resistors are doomed. He and his followers shall be your, t your targets. Track them down and crush them. Perfection shall be your reward. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> this is great. And the art is fantastic, by the way. So, yeah. Um, so then this... Construction by uh, Lyman is, uh, is being made. It's called Volcania. And here at Volcania, the Overmind was free to create its new world. Power levels at maximum. Process initiated. So, yeah, he talks to the Overmind here. And um, he says, begin the creation. Well, on the, let's say, good guy camp, um, robots are, um, you know, tested against humans. 
Well, Lyman is here. Go on, maintain power at all costs. And we see here, you know, the son of power. What's his name again? I forgot. Uh, Jonathan, right. Is basically, I don't know, Magnus the robot fighter, I guess. And uh, yeah, he's battling robots and he's succeeding. He's, you know, pretty cool. And then Lyman says, come to be born. And then Sauron is created. Now look how freaking cool this looks. You know, stepping out of the machine, screaming, you know, birth anew. And the only thing that misses is the uh, Decepticon <laughs> uh, logo on his chest. But that is so cool. As Jonathan Power honed his skills as a robot fighter in the heart of Volcania, Overmind was giving a gift to Claude Dredd. A gift that would be cast, cast a horrible shadow on man's struggle against machine. The gift, Sauron, a flying, fighting, self-repairing machine whose programmed desire was and is to see and participate in the process of the end of all humans. And then we see here the same, but then the other side with, you know, Captain Power and the Sun. And uh, yeah, this is, this is so cool. So, and then, yeah, the, the story ends here. Well, as you can say it, uh, well, Power is at this grave of his father. And uh, he says that... Uh, Malenkovich uh, has the plans of a doomsday machine that he would turn over to the good guys. Um, but yeah, they lost him. And um, well, here in the enemy's lair, um, Sauron is here. And um, you, Sauron, would lead the assault, assault team to Captain Power. I want him dead. And he says, by the will of the machine... I will destroy Captain Power. And he bows. This is so cool. This is basically the end of the comic. Uh, I can do a, you know, a vol uh, uh, issue number two review if you want it. But, you know, th there won't be an issue free, unfortunately. So, guys, let me know what you think about this comic. Are you interested in getting it yourself? Or have you fond memories about this TV show? Or not? Leave a comment and uh, like my video. That helps a lot. And I see you next time.